So I have this old Dell Dimension 4100 that I had rescued from getting scrapped. And I've taken it apart fully and I've been wanting to do some modification to it. So in fitting with kind of the theme of what I like to do, I figured I would make it a little local LLM machine. And in part just to do like a cool resto mod video, but also in part to test this Intel Arc A750 graphics card that I have lying around. So I'm just here, the chassis stripped down, and I'm just trying to mount this little cheap motherboard that I've had lying around. So I got some new RAM for it, as it does take DDR4, which is cool. And I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of build this and put it together, and then put Linux on it and test the performance of the A750. So this computer had a motherboard originally that was mounted on some, um, sort of proprietary standoffs. So unfortunately I had to remove those. And the way that I'm trying to mount this new motherboard is by actually having this little thing right here, which is a 3D printed kind of standoff, little design sort of thing. However, this is pretty weak and it's obviously gonna break. It will also deform on any heat. So I'm gonna just kind of make a different one of these. I found this on Thingiverse that is a little better and I think I'll print it in ASA just to have a bit more temperature resistance. I decided to just kind of remake the original clips it had. So it's probably very difficult to see, but I made these little things. So they're flexible and they have ridges. So it'll probably be easier to understand when I place one in. So like here's one of the slots for the motherboard. So you bring it here, probably really hard to see. You squeeze it and then it slides in and it has a ridge in the top as well so that if you put pressure on it from uh, vertically facing down it won't slide through. So these are definitely better than having a whole entire thing like that. Just less to print, easier and I designed them as you can see this one here so that the screws that hold the motherboard thread right in. I printed a bunch of those little things that I showed you that I designed and the motherboard's not screwed in yet but it is mounted so just to pull it off the CPU cooler which is questionable behavior. You can just see they're all in place in here, the little black dots basically and if I flip this over you can just see how they mount in the back. So they just clip in like that and they stay in place pretty well. If they don't hold, I can redesign them to have a screw that holds them from the bottom, but I don't believe that's gonna be necessary. So now it's time to mount the motherboard. We have been on this motherboard. Oh, how it troubles me. The card is in now as well. This is the Intel Arc, and I'll come around to the back and we should be able to see the name. A750 Limited Edition. So this is just a little eight gig card, I believe. I bought this about a year ago for a different sort of project, but I didn't end up using it that much. So I'm definitely very bullish on Intel's entry into the dedicated GPU market, first and foremost, but in overall and thinking towards the future, their ability to hopefully make a competitive card for AI and machine learning tasks that is not prohibitively expensive. I got this Corsair Vengeance 16 gigabytes of DDR4. Just something to throw in there because all my other RAM went into the 3090 Ti build. So I'll pop this open and place these in the motherboard. Let's get some RAM opening ASMR. Oh yeah. Ooh. Yeah, I'm just kidding. I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Now we're going to install the RAM, but first I would like to point out something. These actually do have a little plastic wrap over the logo, so if you do get sticks like this, make sure you peel this off, or you'll forget like me. And... All right, now for the first one, just a quick tip to installing RAM. It's generally good practice to use the coordinated slots, so this will be in the third slot if we're going this way, and then the matching pair will go in the first. 
also they're, they're color coordinated, so it's easier to tell that way. Now we have stick two, and you peel that off out of focus. And put it in, light pressure. I'm being slightly more gentle than I normally would because of my 3D printed motherboard standoffs. But now that's all set and the RAM is installed. Now for the power supply, I've got this, in my opinion, incredible Cooler Master Wave case, but I'm not currently using this for anything. It had a different build in it. So I have a little Corsair 750 in here, so I'm just gonna pull this out and use that. This case was really awesome. I picked this up secondhand off Facebook Marketplace for 40 bucks. It has all of these nice, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but the Noctua fans, and it had some other cool stuff. And I do have the side panel, I just pulled it off to get the power supply out. I'm just making sure that the top case clears the power supply, which it does. Uh, this looks weird, you'll tell why later on in the video. This kind of has a weird design to it. Where things need to go in place before other things do. Now with the power supply, uh, fortunately it does kind of fit. The only issue I'm having here is that the rocker switch for power on and off is being impeded upon by this little thing right here. I have to say though, I'm getting kind of excited just even with this front panel mocked up haphazardly like this. It, this just looks so cool to me. I love stuff like this, sleeper builds, retro beige cases, so I'm excited. I had this little guy kicking around just anyway. I bought it from Micro Center. It was uh, $50. Actually, I believe it was less. I may have gotten it on sale. It may have been somewhat around $40. Now, this is not a modular power supply like that one, which I do believe just means that the plugs are statically mounted in this one, unlike that one. However, considering this is a case where wire management is really not something that's going to be seen by anybody, suppose it may be better to just use this power supply. I have done a small bit of research on whether the ARC A750 can handle a 600 watt power supply or vice versa, and it does seem that it should be fine. Sorry for my messy unboxing, but doing it with one hand. And oh, check here. Nope, this has the power switch on the side too. Damn. Those Google images lied to me. Although this has the same style as the other power supply, it's different enough that everything works fine. Fortunately, this little bar is protruded out from the rest of the case and that allows enough clearance for everything here. So I'm happy to report that we're good to go. I was only able to get two screws in as the holes for the other two are just not accessible. However, I did a supremely in-depth sag analysis and found that this is likely fine as it does have tabs down here that will keep it flat, hopefully. Be free, my friends. I found this little USB card likely USB 2, but I'm less concerned with its functionality and just more interested in the fact that it will fill up one of these empty slots back here because I don't have many of those covers. And it's cool because it just plugs into the USB um, slot on the motherboard. I got the little USB extension card installed and I also found some more suitable screws for the Intel graphics card. I'm this little slotted hard drive adapter, so it just slides into one of the back panel slots like this, and I can mount my SSD directly into it, which is awesome, because I wasn't quite sure how I was going to be mounting that in the case anyway. I got the SSD mounted using this little thing from Thingiverse, which is awesome. I love 3D printing. The big issue that I'm going to need to contend with now is the fact that this power button and reset button, if I do choose to use the reset button, are non-standard. So when you push the power button, it has this odd mechanism here to kind of 
transition the point of contact to the power switch. So I'll need a custom little power switch that gets mounted below the actual button. Because you can see the buttons up there, but the post that hits the switch is down here. So fortunately I have a 3D printer, so should be able to come up with something that can contend with this issue. I had been planning to just make my own power button for it and kind of jury rig it together, but fortunately I found some spare parts in an old unused case, including some LEDs and power buttons. So I will try to get the LEDs as well as the reset button working. I also found this little fan, which appears to be a relatively good size to fit back here, which is awesome. And then I'll put another fan in front right here. The airflow won't be magnificent, but I'd prefer not to cut the front. Finally, I have the cage for the CD drive and things like that. So on Thingiverse, I found a back plate for this motherboard as I don't have one. So that's really cool just to be able to print that. So unfortunately, this case had been a little mangled. And fitting the motherboard um, plate cover that I printed just didn't work. I had to cut it a lot. I tried taking the motherboard out so that I could place it back in and it's just not working right. So I'm going to have to come up with a different solution for this. But I'm going to kind of postpone this till one of the last things that I do. So I... I don't know if I'm going to use this, but I have this old Cooler Master Musketeer, which is hard to see right now, but it's got a bunch of cool readouts and things like that. It's not quite period correct for this build, but I really want to just at least see how it looks inside of it. I designed this little mount to try to just mount a power switch and a power LED, and it's now... All right, so what I have to do now is, because this actually mounts in here, this piece, and that's how these clips clip in. So the clearance is fine for that switch, so now I just have to mount this, clean everything up. I'm also kind of toying with this, which I understand is probably a questionable design decision, but I just like that little thing so much. Now, when I first used this, which was a while ago, but man, look how cool this thing looks. Um, there was an issue where it wasn't getting power, and the problem is the Molex that gets power to it is totally loose. So I'm just using kind of a bench test right now to check it. Don't worry, this power supply is uh, the correct parameters to get this thing working. So as we can see right now, bolts are working and the camera switched there we go so this thing's totally cool and i mean that's just really like it's so neat and it's got connections so this is a thermometer and there's also connections for fans and things of that sort however if i yeah so there's kind of a loose connection there so i'm going to open this up and just deal with that so here's our issue. You can see the solder points here are not actually making contact. It is difficult to see. So I'm going to have to re-solder these once I securely clip this back in and make sure it can't drop out. So I re-soldered those contacts. I don't have that on camera because my soldering is, you know, subpar. Uh, so this uh, is just solid now. If I wiggle it, it doesn't have the same issue. This thing is just rather delicate, so if any one of you has one of these, if you need to take the PCB out for any reason, be incredibly careful because when you remove these front three screws, the displays may like flop forward and it could break the connection, so be careful. This is just something you need to be very delicate with. But it's fixed and I'm happy. So cool. Now that the power button is working, my next step is going to be to start putting everything together finally, which will be awesome. Mm -hmm. So I ended up going with the beige DVD drive anyway. I think what I'm going to do is get an IDE to SATA adapter so that I can actually use this drive as well just because 
I don't like having it in there as a dummy. Um, I don't like stuff like that. I like everything to work. So, but to be honest with you, I know this isn't quite a resto mod with this uh, little feature in the front there, but I, I love the way this thing looks right now. I'm excited and I'm gonna keep putting it together. Everything is pretty much buttoned up now. I just kind of taped the thermometer sensor down there. And for this, obviously that is not how things should be, they're exposed. But I'm just doing that real quick because I think it's one is power, two is ground on a three pin setup. So I'm just gonna test that before. And then I've crimped this little three pin connector. So I'll just have one and two and I'll splice that into the fan wire. So I'm pretty much just ready to boot it up. All right, now that three sides are on and the only thing remaining is this side panel, I'm just going to plug it in and turn it on, but just to see if the fans work and things of that sort. So I'm not doing a full test yet of booting, just seeing if it has power. So I'll just hit this. is so incredibly quiet. And I've noticed my fan isn't working the one in back. So I'll have to bring you around here. But the blue lights are on for that, which I like. And the Intel card is lit up. However, this fan back here is not spinning. I'm gonna pull one of these just because I don't want it to short out if it is uh, a bad connection. So I'll try the fan, but for now, it's uh, pretty darn cool, I like that. Let's see if the disk drive opens. Whoa, <laughs> cool. So it's very hard to see, but I'll, I'll see if you can see it. I'm, there is the faintest little green LED in there from the power LED that I had put in. And you can see it much clearer from the back. And this, I'm very happy that I decided to put this in. I think it's super cool. I have this little Molex to two pin fan thing. So that's plugged directly into the power supply now. So I'll be able to tell if I Forgot to plug the cord in the back. Whoops. As I was saying, I will now be able to tell if this fan works or not. Oh, cool. It does. All right, so I think I might just wire it this way rather than try to fiddle with this thing. Is It is rather old, so I'd prefer to just have it look good and make sure that all right, I did put that in the right way. Wonderful. And the build is completed, which I'm very excited about. It's not plugged in. I was just checking the power supply because I've become kind of paranoid about that. So it's simple and beige. And now we will move it to its new spot and have some fun. I just snipped the 3D printed rear cover that I had. So for now, that's a totally fine temporary solution. I'll finish off this video here as I'm installing Ubuntu. I'm very happy with how this came out. I really had a lot of fun with this. It took um, a few days longer than I had anticipated, but that's all right. So now I'm just gonna run through this. And in my next video, I will be using this machine to test the performance of the Intel Arc a750 graphics card in some local LLM stuff.